Hello and welcome back to the QT Office video tutorials. This is the new Create Invoice Basics video tutorial. This will replace the old one because we're adding new features. We've since broke the invoice down into three different sets and we're doing three different videos. This one is the first one and we'll cover normal sales invoices. Normal sales invoices is your most common type of invoice. The other two are tax write-off invoices, which you should be used to if you've been using QT, and the new ones, which are the return and exchange invoices. We've added that because of customer feedback, and so we can help you track your returns and exchanges better and more accurately reflect your taxes for the year. So like any invoice, let's go ahead and go to the invoice tab. And we're going to recover some things we covered before because our new QTs are probably going to want this information. So before we go create our first normal cell invoice, let's go ahead and take a look over here on the left. We have options like create invoice, all paid invoices, which are going to be the normal sale invoices, the tax write-off invoices will show up here, and the returns and exchange invoices will show up here, but we'll get to those in future videos. The next one down is the unpaid invoices, which is also your default view. You can see the unpaid invoices text here, and these are the customers that still owe you money. You can actually take partial payments with the system, so the total pay and the amount left may be different. In this case, they're both the same. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the icons here. We can view the invoice by clicking the printer icon or the PDF. You can also click on this and then either save it to your computer or print it out and hand it to your customer. The edit option used to be the way that you would exchange and return items. Now what we do is we will create an invoice and handle returns and exchanges that way. And again, we'll cover that video in just a few minutes. You can also email a copy of this invoice to someone as long as their email address is input into the customer name. So if you have their name and there's no email associated with them, then they will not get this when you click email. If they do have their email input, then it'll show up here. And then it'll show as an attachment. Go ahead and put the subject in and then let them know what's going on as far as the message goes. You can also mark this paid, which will move it to your paid invoices. You can delete it, and if you delete it, all the products go back on the shelf. So unless they're returning everything and everything is undamaged then you would not want to use the delete button now if everything was not opened was could be sold completely again then you could use that but a better habit will be getting into the create invoice and using the returns and exchanges you can take a note on any invoice that you like for instance cash check on tuesday and then you can refer back to it just by hovering over you can also look for invoices by dates and invoices by customer. So if Ashley had 10 invoices, you could go click this and look her name up and see every invoice that she's ever had. A quicker way to probably find out what Ashley's bought though is by going to customer and then finding her profile for her purchase history. And this is just an example but that's a separate video so let's get back to the invoice and we're going to create invoice which is here or here they go to the same location and this is the main invoice screen the invoice type is normal sale by default because you create more normal sale invoices than anything else if you need to change it you just click the little change button here and your other options will come up which we'll go through in different videos there's only one type of normal sale invoice and that's normal sale which is selected by default the next step you'll do is you'll pick your customer if your customer is not entered into QT yet you can always import them from InTouch or you can just add them by clicking the add customer button here the next thing up will be the date today's date is selected by default now you can actually go back years if you like and enter in old invoices I'd like to point out this button here that says adjust inventory. By default you want to leave this checked because when you create the invoice the product is going to be taken off of your shelf. Now that's really important to keep your inventory levels correct. The only time you'd want to uncheck this is if you found an old invoice and your inventory is correct right now. 
So for example, you just did an inventory on hand count, everything's perfect, but you forgot to enter in an old invoice. Then you would uncheck it and go ahead and create your invoice as normal. Everything would be tracked for you, including purchase history, customer purchase history, inventory history, your tax sheet would be updated with your profits, and if you gave any discounts, those would also show up in total discounts given. We'll go ahead and leave the adjust inventory button checked for now. And if you need to go back and refer, look for these little blue question marks because they'll tell you more about what's going on with that feature. The easiest way to find a product is to just start typing in a keyword. And for instance, I'm typing in time-wise now and you can see this is bold. This search bar looks for an exact match, so if I typed in time-wise luminous, this would come up. But if I typed in time-wise liquid, this would not come up. As you can see, there's a lot of time-wise products, so maybe that's not the best keyword to use. How about miracle? As you can see, I type in the first three letters of miracle and my results slim down very quickly. I'm going to go find the item that I want, the normal dry miracle set. I'm going to click on it and it gets added to my invoice. Now if you click on it and it does not add to your invoice, then you probably need to click on the center and not the edge. And I'll show you what I mean. If you click on the edge down here, it doesn't always add to the invoice, but if you click in the middle it will. And while I have this up, you'll see some numbers over here on the side. 2, 2, 3, 3. This is how many of the QT things you have on your shelf. And as long as you're inputting them correctly and creating invoices for them and splitting your package products, then everything should stay on track. You'll want to do an end of year inventory count, no matter what your business is, just to correct any inconsistencies. Maybe somebody walked off with a product, maybe you added the wrong one to the invoice simple things like that. I'd also like to point out these little buttons here. Only on hand, current active products, discontinued products, and section 2 current and discontinued. The only on hand are just going to show the items I actually have on my shelf. Now that's really convenient because look I unchecked it and now I'm showing a bunch of other stuff on here that I don't even have on my shelf and I can't sell. Every now and then you might have to uncheck that to sell a product that you're borrowing but you can go to inventory and click on loan and borrowed and process that. Sometimes you're in a hurry and have to come back and do those things though. You can have more than one checkbox checked at a time. In fact you can have them all checked at a time. And this is handy if for instance you need to sell a product and you're not sure if it was discontinued or not. All our discontinued products will have a D in front of them. and here's the D here and I had to uncheck my only on hand because I didn't have any showing there so let's get into the main invoice here and by the way if you don't like the search bar you can come down to the next line and click the green plus sign and this way you can just select the category that you want and click on the item you want and it gets added if you pick the wrong one you can always just click the X and it'll be taken off your sheet you can also change the quantity here and do a dollar discount right here on the line. I normally recommend using the discounts down here, but these work just as well. This one up here will be dollar only and apply to this one item. The percentage down here will apply to the entire invoice, so keep that in mind. And the dollar discount down here will apply to the entire invoice, but realistically that's the exact same thing as up here. Your tax rate will be automatically filled in as long as you put it in under my account. You can change this anytime you want, for instance if you're selling over state lines. No problem at all. And you'll see that updates for you. Let me show you what the after discount button is here. So let's pretend that you gave this person five dollars off, which is a pretty big discount. Right now they're paying tax on the entire amount. Let's actually go do this so you see what it looks like. So here's the sales tax amount. Now watch what happens after I click after discount. You'll see that that went down. This after discount button is saying that I'm going to charge my customer only the tax on the discounted amount, not the full amount. But I would probably get them to pay tax on the full amount because you pay tax on the full amount and they're still getting a great deal. So uncheck that 
and they'll pay tax on the full amount. You can charge shipping and packaging if you like. This applies for CDS orders too. If you use the customer delivery server, go ahead and put in the shipping amount that they paid here because when you import that product, it'll show the shipping as a charge on your account and that evens it out. So CDS orders, you'll put the shipping they paid, normally $5. Your invoice total will show here. This is going to be your price of your product minus any discounts plus your taxes. You can take partial payments and if you do that then you'll uncheck the paid in full right here and then you'll be able to enter in your money here. The gift code is if you actually create and sell gift codes. You can do that under inventory and there's instructions under the gift code themselves. If you have a discount then those will just go into the discount field and if your customer has credit it'll show up in this area here. I believe I have a test customer with some fake credit. So let's go take a look and see what that looks like. I've selected Amy and I can see that she has a customer credit balance here. So if I wanted to take customer credit, I would put it here in the customer credit box. I would not put that in the discount box because that would not subtract from here. If I put that in the customer credit box, it will remove from here and I can keep track on how much credit she actually has. I'm going to go ahead and mark this paid in full and hit continue. The next page we're going to be on is going to be the review page, which is basically going to let you take one last look and make sure you haven't made any mistakes. For instance, putting $50 in shipping instead of 5 or anything like that. As soon as this is done, you can just hit confirm. And the product has been removed from your shelf as long as the adjust inventory box wasn't unchecked. Your customer's purchase history has been updated, your inventory item history has been updated, your tax sheet has been updated, and now you have a couple more options as well. You can create a follow-up from here, you can print this or email it. You can do all these things later as well, but I would recommend doing the follow-up now. This is a really good habit, especially for your new team members coming in, because a lot of times they haven't got used to that and phone fears are real. So this helps people get over the phone fears by doing a friendly reminder saying that, hey, this would be great customer service to follow up with this person. For an example, let's go ahead and remove all three of these and add another date. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I'm pretending I'm selling a microderm abrasion. I know that product's going to last about three months. So I'm just going to go pick a random date about three months out and put a note. and then I'll save it. Three months down the road I'll forget all about this but I'll get an email reminder that'll go to my QT calendar and then it'll get emailed directly to my email I have under my account. I don't have to worry about this anymore because it's like set it and forget it. You'll get a daily list of all your events, birthdays, anniversaries, six most important things, any of the information that you've put in. So this concludes the normal sale invoice the other two invoices are very similar, but I would definitely encourage you to watch those because there are some key differences that you're going to want to know. And by watching the invoice videos, you're going to have the biggest part of QT down, keep your taxes straight, keep your inventory straight, and save a lot of headaches at the end of the year. Thank you very much for watching QT, and if you enjoy using the system, I would encourage you to come up here to tell a friend and print a brochure out because every referral you get you get a free month and the cool thing about this brochure it's gonna put your username your first name and instructions on how someone can get you credit when they sign up for the free trial so you just click on that and then you bring it to your unit meeting and use QT free thank you so much for your time and we hope you enjoyed the video